Hi, I'm Jim McCord, Product Marketing Engineer at Keysight Technologies. In this video, we will show LTE handover testing using Keysight's UXM wireless test set. With me is Karen Mancinelli, one of our learning products engineers, to demonstrate LTE to LTE handover using a single UXM test set and show the insights you can gain during the process. The demo setup uses a commercial LTE Advanced Category 4 device. Over to you, Karen. Thanks, Jim. Handover performance is incredibly important to mobile users of cellular networks and can impact the user's perception of both the handset and network. When a handover is performed well, the user will have no idea that they've been transferred from one cell to a different cell. The UE is running a host of background activities, collecting information on the adjacent cells, analyzing their signal quality, communicating with the network for handover decisions, and maintaining voice and data connections as appropriate. The UXM wireless test set includes two fully independent base station emulators so that in the controlled environment of your development laboratory, you can see how your UE design performs under a range of different conditions. The UXM is designed for flexibility and ease of use, so you can quickly gain valuable insights as to whether your UE is meeting your design goals. Let's begin by showing you how easy it is to set up two independent cells on a single UXM. The cell tab at the bottom of the screen provides access to the cell setup. We see cell 1 is set for FDD, band 3, 10 MHz bandwidth, with a power of minus 85 dBm. Switching over to view cell 2, we can confirm this is set the same, except this cell is in frequency band 5. Note that I'm running the UXM in stack mode. That is to say that the base station emulation relies on the UXM's internal protocol stack to interact with the UE. Let me go to the scheduling tab to show you that we have set the subframe coding to the maximum permissible. And in the downlink resource block allocation, we are using all available resource blocks in a 2x2 two two downlink antenna configuration. This is the case for both cells. Going back to the cell screen, I'm now showing the message summary tab, which displays the higher messaging between the UE and the UXM. At this stage, the cells are turned off, and so I now activate them. Look for the change of state in the diagram at the top of the screen. My UE is currently in flight mode. As I take it out of flight mode, it will first try to connect to the last cell it was aware of, which is cell 1 in the UXM. As the UE interacts with the UXM, we see the on-screen messages with a connection request, then authentication and security exchanges before the attach is complete. The state diagram has changed to confirm a connected state. Let me get some data transferring between the UE and the UXM. The Blair throughput measurement confirms that for this Category 4 device, I'm achieving approximately 74 megabits per second on the downlink and 25 megabits per second on the uplink. Let me show you how to check the IP address that has been assigned to the UE. If we navigate to the EPS bearer configuration, we can see the IPv4 address. I can also show you the RF performance of the UE's transmitter. Quickly navigating to the adjacent channel power measurement, we can see that all looks well. Going back to the message summary, as I turn on cell 2, we see the state diagram change and some MIB and SIB messages are being sent on the downlink. Now I'm ready to initiate the intra-LTE handover from cell 1 in band 3 to cell 2 in band 5. Keep your eyes on the state diagrams as I invoke the handover. Cell 2 has now changed to the connected state and cell 1 has released from connected to on. We see the additional message in our message summary tab, RRC connection reconfiguration complete, confirming handover success. The Blair throughput measurement confirms the downlink data rate is still 74 megabits per second on the downlink and 25 megabits per second on the uplink. We have successfully handed over from cell 1 in band 3 to cell 2 in band 5. Through this, we have confirmed that the UE has retained a consistent IP address and that the expected data rate was achieved. Thanks, Karen. We just saw with a single UXM how quickly and easily you can verify UE performance during handover between two different cells. The UXM enables you to emulate two fully independent LTE cells flexibly and easily, giving insight to different aspects of UE performance, such as connected state, data rates, IP address, RF performance, and all can be verified under a broad range of handover conditions. 
With the UXM, you can assess your design readiness with greater confidence. Is your design ready? For more information, visit the website on your screen. Thanks for watching.